Hebrews 6, 4. Staggering between the old and the new. Hebrews 6, 12 through 14 states, For when the time you ought to be teachers, you should be teaching these things. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to those that are of a full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. They are staring in awe at this religious system that they are being asked to leave behind. It is dulling their spiritual sense. They are told here that they need to exercise their senses to discern good and evil. What is good and evil here? Good is laying hold of Christ and partaking of him. Evil is holding on to anything, even that which God ordained in the past, if it becomes an obstacle or stumbling block preventing you from laying hold of Christ. They needed their senses to be resharpened. He is telling them, quote, you were acting like babies. You actually are more mature than this, but you have been neglecting things. Now you are staring at this great big system saying, whoa, should we have left that? Should we not try to incorporate that into this? Surely Christ did not leave that behind. That's our history, our tradition. God ordained it, end quote. Try to imagine how overwhelming this would have been. Leaving all of that behind would be extremely difficult. This is one of the reasons why God had to destroy the temple. The temple, together with the city of Jerusalem, was such an anchor that it really caused confusion as long as it was allowed to stand. In order to get the church into heavenly truths, he had to demolish the earthly aspects of the religion that they were leaving behind, including all the monuments to them. So this is the run up to chapter six. Then in chapter six, he starts by saying, quote, do not be a baby. You should be a teacher, end quote. In verse one of chapter six. It states, therefore, leaving the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Verse two, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Verse three, and this will we do if God permits. That system was so attractive that it made them question everything as they started entertaining the idea of trying to synthesize the two. The basic doctrines were being upset in their minds. How do we get saved? What do we do? Now we don't have a high priest? Oh, we have a high priest in heaven. Remember, the topic that he was wanting to bring them into was the high priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek, which is really the heart of the revelation in Hebrews. They need to be aware that they now have a high priest who has passed through the heavens. They are looking at the earthly high priest in the temple and saying, well, that looks real. That looks like what we're supposed to be doing. That is calling into question everything about the Christian faith. So the writer is saying, look, you are going back to the beginning and having to reestablish a foundation of the basics of how you got saved. This is what we do all the time when we entertain the legalist because we are having the arguments about the very basics of how to get saved and stay saved. If we cannot get past that, how are we going to move on and be perfected? 
That is why I have warned, be careful of what YouTube videos you watch. If you keep watching these folks, your senses will be dulled. I know people who are mature in grace who tell me after watching so many videos, they get turned, quote unquote, upside down. Then they have to go back and reestablish the foundation. And that is what he is saying. We need to move on. I am trying to tell you about a heavenly set of realities that you can enjoy so you can partake of Christ, but you keep going back to the beginning, trying to figure out if you're saved. Doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. These are the very basics of what is established when we got saved. Hebrews 6, 3 through 8 states, and this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed receiveth a blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. Now let us keep reading. Please do not stop there. Verses 9 through 19 of Hebrews chapter 6 states, but beloved, we are persuaded to better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast in which entereth into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> 